Welcome back, gang. Welcome back to the big board. So, the Dark Sands won Africa 1940-42. It's a shrink rip, but power, don't panic. It's more than me just subtly pulling off the plastic. It's going to be more than just a fawning, adoring look at the components. I'm actually going to try and uh, talk a little somewhat knowledgeably, <laughs> anyway, as knowledgeably as I can without playing, about the game, rule structure, the components and bits and pieces. So we're going to get into it and have a little bit of a look at things. But first, we're going to flip over the box and take a look at uh, the back of the box and see what the back of the box has to say. And uh, interestingly enough, I got to say, I, I really do quite enjoy the box artwork here. It, it's taking a handful of images that are perhaps you know, being used before and uh, have you know, been seen many, many times, but the color treatment, the, the harsh African heat wave look about it has a has a good feel. Funnily enough, it's all about the Germans again, though, right? This has been several GMT games that focus in on the Germans, and the imagery uh, seems to sell well when we start talking about and looking at images of 88 millimeter guns and you know iconic leaders. This is probably Rommel here in a sort of darkened out, uh, muted kind of way. So it's interesting that that is always kind of the case with uh, with GMT games, and in fact with many many companies' games. Right? But moving back to the to the back of the box, I thought it was interesting to see that uh, Charles Kibler was involved in the map art, and the counter art was a, a looks like a joint production here with uh, Mark and Charles. <coughs> Excuse me. And obviously it's a Ted Racier design. And I've played the Dark Valley. And I, I, I'll i be one of the few people who's had a, I guess, glowing review relative to everybody else's reviews of the Dark Valley. I thought that despite the fact that you may not be able to achieve every single historical uh, point in time achievement that the Germans achieved it was an interesting game despite that and that is because this chip pull mechanic that the the dark series if you want to call that uses gives us a uh, a, a a more nuanced view into sort of the random chance of of the game uh, and of the, the history there right you've got uh, in this game, we'll see the same thing, I am sure. But we're going to wait to talk about why I liked... We won't talk about why I like the Dark Valley. Let's talk about this game here. So, uh, game scale, one to two months, battalions and regiments, and some divisions. I imagine that'll be the Italians with their big divisions. Uh, two to four hours for a, a scenario. Obviously, a high sol solitaire value because of the uh, chip pull mechanic. That will keep things interesting. Looks like we're going to have some leader counters this time. So that might be cool. We'll see how that's applied and if it's done similarly to uh, to the Dark Valley. The artwork on the counters is uh, clean and functional. It's, you know, at least in this, these, what we're seeing here, nothing to write home about in terms of uh, uh, the uh, design features and, and whatnot. Uh, pretty clearly attack, defense, and movement more than likely. And then artillery bonuses, DRMs of some sort. Same with air. So potentially some genericized uh, application of that. Now here's an interesting, here's your 88s, right? Is that an 88? Well, it looks like it is to me from here. A plus two to a plus four. So we'll find out what they are a little bit later on. And then very high strength values for the various different types of uh, tank unit, Italian and German tank units, 868s and 646s and 658s here. So pretty powerful stuff. Uh, some naval units and bits and pieces. And of course, a nice little blurb to tell you that you should buy the game. So we'll uh, pause here and we'll open the box up and we'll be back to talk about the game. And no point in uh, ogling the fairly busy map here. Uh, we'll have a look at that in detail when we get inside the box. We're back. Let's have a look at the inside of the Dark Sands. And 
Early on, I was mentioning how all of the artwork was very sort of uh, Nazi-fied and all that sort of stuff and, and German-centric. On the inside of the box, we have the Dark Sands uh, rule book and scenario book, and they both have uh, Commonwealth-centric and Allied-centric artwork on the covers. You've got uh, Spitfires and British tanks and Monty and of course Churchill on the cover. And then uh, let's just real see real quickly in the playbook. Yeah, the playbook, well, to me it looks like the GMT Catherine uh, cover artwork, but hey, I guess it works, right? So it's got, that's all German there as well, but whatever. Now, uh, one of the things about the dark system, I don't know what to call it really, but let's call it the dark sands system, which is similar to the dark valley system is that it uses this chip pull mechanic that uh, allows you to uh, be surprised every action there are a uh, <clears throat> based on the month or months there are a number of chips that go into the bucket and uh, to be drawn from and your your number of activations is is a changing thing from uh turn to turn so turn three march april for instance the british get uh two move chits two uh mc which is move or combat combo chits but with a minus one drm and we'll we'll work out what that is later we're not going to dig into a complete rules review here uh and then uh, the, Ru uh, the the Russians, the uh, the Germans get the Axis forces get uh, a Rommel chit, Africa Corps chit, twenty one Corps chit, two MC chits, two half MC chits, and a minus one DRM on that as well. And then that, interestingly enough, unlike Dark Valley, which you could really see the change from overwhelming German capability. And, uh, you know, number of moves and then it, it dwindled away and the Soviet ability rose up and they got more and more chits as the, as the game went on and as time passed. Here, it, <clears throat> it really seems to me that, in fact, now it depends on what the Monty chit can do for you. But for instance, turn 15, which is the third last turn, October 42, the British get a Monty chit, the 8th Army chit, one mo one uh, move chit and uh, one combat chit, I believe that is, and then uh, you know everyone gets reinforcement chit. Whereas the Axis get the Rommel Panzer Army Africa and two half move combat chits. Now that depending on what the capabilities are of the different command and army chits, which I'm assuming it's going to allow them to move and combat, for instance, or combat and move, as the case may be just based on past experience without reading the rules. Uh, so that's an interesting little, there's a, there's a dynamic going on here uh, and you don't see in this, this list here, you don't see the, the logistics uh, chip come up and stuff like that. So uh, that's also included in here as well uh, when the, in the chip pool uh, exercise. So yeah, in fact, there's two logistics chips uh, they'll put in every turn. So, it's interesting that it's, it's, it looks like at the at the you know first glance to be a relatively balanced level of activations for both sides, which is kind of cool. So, all right, so that's the the hardcore. Here's the active activation action chip descriptions on the back. Actually, and I'm just going to quickly look here and see if it tells us anything significant. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it because it's very rule specific. Uh, definitions on the back here as you can see wordy and we don't want to get into that and bore that entire crap out of you just part of it uh, just like in the old game the other game there's a, an assault uh, attack type and there's a, a moving assault or mobile assault uh, attack type so we'll get to have fun with that choosing what to do and when to do it uh, everything is a, a function of DRMs, uh, the primary ways that you're moving the, uh, the result around. And even logistically, if you're out of supply, the primary problem you're going to face is a DRM uh, on your combat. So it's not going to halve your combat capability or anything like that, but it will negatively give, will give you a DRM in, in, to the downside for you. So 
Uh, logistics in this game, pretty standard. A number of hexes to a trail or a road or a rail line and then shoot back to a supply source and you're good to go. Um, which will be interesting to see how it plays out in the, the, the maps. Uh, there's some restrictions around ports and restrictions around the way that uh, you know, certain map sections have, have uh, are a little more flexible than other sections um, for one side or the other. And and we can to see how that plays out because logistics, you know, water, fuel, bullets, beans, and, and water were critical to these uh, these soldiers out in the desert, right? Pretty pretty uh, dramatic uh, environment to be fighting a war in. The rules uh, clock in at uh, a modest 19 pages, including a designer's note section, which is uh, really just one page. There's a fairly extensive example of play in here by the looks of it, uh, starting at page 11. So that's going to give you eight pages of examples with images that uh, it's all full color, high gloss rule book. I'm not a huge fan of the high gloss stuff. I'll be waiting for the uh, PDF to be available and then I'll print it out and do my usual marking up of the rules and stuff like this and we'll keep this neat and pristine since you can't really write on it anyway very effectively uh and now i'm looking at this what i was holding up to you is actually the playbook so the playbook is 19 pages my apologies the example of play is eight pages long and then there's uh four scenarios compass sunflower crusader and gazala and i'm assuming there's a, a campaign game in here as well otherwise we made a huge mistake uh, we can look that up later on we can I'll, I'll write something up about this at some point anyway when I post the video on the blog so you can watch the video on YouTube and you can see it on Facebook but make sure that you check in later on at the blog and I'll have a link to the video and I'll have some pic additional pictures and some notes of some sort at some point uh, there's a zone effects summary and a out of supply effects summary on page 10, which is rather unusual. Why isn't that on the chart? We'll see what it is before we criticize. Uh, okay, it's just a straight couple of paragraphs. So that might've been nice to have that handy somewhere else. Let's see. So I'm gonna pause the video now and we'll flip around and let's have a look at the counters and the map artwork and all that sort of good stuff. All right, let's have a look at the stuff here is two sets of charts for the, the game players well two CRTs anyway a couple of dice in here somewhere and some baggies the usual stuff um, out. two counter sheets and our first thing that struck me is really there's a, a one sheet of info counters so we've got our uh, various uh, chits that we're going to put into the game and uh, some sort of control markers I'm guessing uh, probably and uh, you obviously just like in the other system you're you're denoting that you where you're going to attack first up there are disruptions that you need to clear more chits bits and pieces so that's all pretty stock standard stuff from the last system and then here we go we're working obviously with the uh, would you call these five eights? I think these are five eights. Uh, they're maybe they're nine sixteenths or something like that. I, I don't know. They're the larger counters, which means we'll have larger hexes, as you'll see in a minute. And the artwork is, you know, it's okay, right? As I said earlier on, this is a fairly clean, if not uninspired, effort, but. Surprisingly few combat counters here. Uh, let's see, here's a 15th Panzer. It's three, four counters. So your recon unit, mechanized infantry, and two armored battalions. Is that it? That looks like it. And 21st is here. Um, and some, obviously some AT guns, 88, etc. Hopefully you can see these okay. And... These are all just standard units. And there's the 90th. Oh, I guess it's all right. I, it just seemed like it was kind of light and even kind of light for the Commonwealth side, really. Uh, but they're probably all here. There's the Aussies. 
second division, and third here. Actually, sorry, that's ninth division and sixth division. I don't know what that two, that two means yet. Um, the South Africans, I don't see the Poles here, but I'm sure they're here somewhere. Obviously, the Indian chaps. And in the Kiwis, good old Kiwis, got to let them have their second division in the game. So, okay, it looks like it's all done by brigade scale. So I just, it, I'm wondering about, like, where are the Hussars and all the, the you know, the 7th Armoured and all that stuff. Here we go. Here's the 7th here. One, two, no. It's all the brigade scale. It's pretty interesting. I'll be curious to see how this plays out. And then you've got the, uh, the Italians up here. Uh with all their standard formations, the RE division and all that sort of good stuff. So there you have that. So let's have a look at the uh, two mapper. Probably gonna have a hard time laying this all out for you, but we'll do what we can. So this is Alexandria on the right. We're going to have to look up, I think this is a just a means for space saving, and I'm sure there's some um, chart somewhere that talks about how you move from A to B there. That's clearly a mechanism to uh, save a little bit of space. Lots of uh, updates and uh, on the turn track, everything's well laid out there, so it's easy to find stuff. It is a busy chart, a busy map though, right? You've got uh, the CRTs repeated on the on the, on the the map, sequence of play on the map, turn record chart with lots of bits, replacements and tracking and VP tracking and all that sort of good stuff, which is all nice. It's all well done, you know? Nice muted tones and desert style tones. No, no complaints, just, just observations, my friends. Here we go, second map. Now we've got Libya and the, the, the eastern, uh, sorry, the western half of uh, the area that we'll be dealing with. So we're, there's Solom on the right and Tobruk here with its special situation. There'll be uh, obviously be minefields and revetments and all that sort of fun stuff in there of some type. And they've got the railroad going in, another CRT, combat results key. More information about all the different turns for both sides. Benghazi over here, and not going to try and pronounce that. And here's our terrain effects chart. And we can look down here, we can see that their supply sources are clearly identified. Salt marshes and all sorts of fun stuff like that. See, here's our little transition point definition. And I'm trying to see if it's here in the rules on the chart here. Doesn't look like it is. I can't see it. That doesn't mean it's not here though. But there you have it. So yeah, all these transition points are, are all over the place. Okay, so interesting stuff. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of a feel for the components and the counters and the charts and rule book, playbook, etc. Uh, I didn't tell you how many pages were in the rule book, did I? So I probably should do that for you. We can have a quick look here. Clocking in at 20 with lots of images, explanations, diagrams, all that sort of good stuff. Tells you how to win right from the get go. How about that? And you're going to find this to be a very straightforward game to play. One of the neat things here is that you're going to be looking at the game from a perspective of you don't know what's coming out next. Are you going to get to move Monty or the 8th Army or uh, uh, a certain number of units or not? And uh, you're going to have to adjust your plans on the fly, which is going to make life interesting. Here's your sequence of play. And I think it also, that's one of the things that I like most about the, the Dark Valley is it gives you, gave you a sense that you were really uh, reacting to and dealing with circumstances as they arose versus the standard old 
lockstep, the Russian campaign. I get to move all my guys and fight all my guys and then move again. And then the other guy gets to fight his guys and he gets to move and some of his other guys get to move again. And, you know, we've all done that a hundred times. Um, there are not a lot of titles, new titles that have been released on the African campaign. So I'm glad to see this out. I don't know that it's going to play out historically, fellas, boys and girls. So we might just have to be a little bit flexible with how it plays and what happens. And we'll see. Uh, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not adverse to things not working out exactly historically. And with this particular campaign, it's very hard to replicate uh, the historicity that uh, is is probably warranted for for the game. Go try and uh, manage that pastor rule that Richard Berg stuck in there just for fun. Or maybe we can try this one and see how it works. I think I'll try this first. All right, all the best. I thought I'd uh, share this with you and I hope you uh, enjoy the quick look at the game and all the bits. I'll talk to you soon.